Welcome back to the three months of modal logics, the sequel to 100 Days of Logic here with Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with epistemic and doxastic logic, looking at axiom 4.2 in doxastic and epistemic logic. So, if you think that axiom 5 is too strong, but axiom 4 is not strong enough, you might gravitate towards one of the next three axioms we're going to offer in this video and the two to follow. Each of the axioms in progression is going to be stronger than axiom 4, but weaker than axiom 5. The weakest of these three axioms can be referred to as axiom 4.2, and it looks something like this. If it's not the case that some S believes that, it's not the case that some S believes that P, that means that S does believe that it's not the case that S believes that not P. Or... If it's not the case that S knows that, it's not the case that S knows that P. That implies that S knows that, it's not the case that S knows that not P. A little bit confusing, but we're going to try to explain it. So the doxastic version states that if you don't believe that you don't believe some proposition, then you believe that you don't believe not P, or not that proposition, the denial of that proposition. The epistemic version of her is that if you don't know that you don't know that P, then you know that you don't know that not P. All right? Kind of just moving our negation signs over one quantifier. If, for example, Suleiman does not believe that he does not believe that he paid the workers, so he lacks the belief that he lacks the belief that he paid the workers. Then, he does in fact believe that it is not the case that he believes that he did not pay the workers. Similarly, if Saminka does not know that he does not know that he parked the car in the lot, then he knows that he does not know that he did not park the car in the lot. Hopefully those make sense. Look at them again if you don't quite understand. A couple of corollaries, however, might help. Once again, a way to make these clearer is to look at their corollaries. Either you believe that you don't believe something, or you believe that you don't believe its negation. So either I hold the belief that I don't believe that some P is true, the cat is on the table, or I believe that I don't believe that the cat is not on the table. So I either believe that I don't believe something or I don't believe it's negation. Or I know something or, or I rather don't know something or don't know it's negation. Though clearly weaker than five, this axiom still seems too strong to me. The skeptic is going to be a prime counterexample. As Skeptic has no beliefs. It's not the case for any particular belief that they either believe that they don't have it or they believe that they don't have its negation. They simply do not have any beliefs about whether they have beliefs since they don't have any beliefs. Think of it like this. This axiom requires that a baby, as soon as it can be classified in a, as an agent, immediately has a belief about whether it either does not believe a certain proposition or does not believe its negation. For all propositions, as soon as a baby becomes classified as an agent, it has infinitely many beliefs. That seems absolutely ridiculous. It seems odd to me that a newly formed agent would have any beliefs at all, let alone beliefs about every single proposition. And it would seem that such a child would not even have implicit beliefs about these things any more than the skeptic or a rock would, if we understand implicit beliefs as beliefs that can be swiftly derived from explicit ones, since the child is probably going to lack those explicit beliefs, or lack most of those explicit beliefs at least. I see no way that a child could swiftly derive opinions their beliefs about every single possible proposition. And the skeptic, who has no beliefs, would not be able to derive anything, since they have no explicit beliefs to start with. Assuming this axiom, or any stronger axiom, will beg the question against the skeptic. So note 
that this axiom or 4.3, 4.4, or axiom 5 is going to be subject to all of these objections and it is going to beg the question against at least the indirect skeptic that claims not to have beliefs. The epistemic version of this axiom is going to come under even greater pressure as while it might be the case that you believe some p but you do not know it because p is in fact false. Take a second to think about this scenario for a minute. Imagine you believe a certain p, but you don't know it, because p is in fact false. This would mean that you don't know that it's not the case that you know that p, since you think that you know that p. So you don't know that it's not the case that you know that p, because you believe that you know that piece. You can't know that it's not the case that you know that piece. Nor do you know that it's not the case that you know that not P, since perhaps your justification for claiming that you don't know that not P is flawed. Perhaps directly by the fact that your only reason for claiming that you know that you don't know that not P is that P is the case, which as stated above is false, since P is not the case. P is in fact false. That was a little complicated, I apologize for a lot of the logical language there, but the point is that if you think that it's possible for you to believe something, but that thing to be false, this is going to be really, really problematic for 4.2 as an epistemic axiom. And this axiom, of course, is also going to beg the question against the skeptic, since it will assume that you know something. Note that this is an especially big problem for axioms because axioms are put forward without justification and therefore if they beg the question against the skeptic or against a specific position by assuming the negation of that position we cannot consider them a real threat to the position if for example someone proposes an axiom which directly states that god does not exist then they are begging the question against the theist. And there is no reason for a theist to accept that axiom because axioms implicitly are not justified or even justifiable any more than there's reason for an atheist to accept an axiom which includes the claim that God does exist or the skeptic to accept an axiom like this one that assumes that we have knowledge. The point is, that these axioms are going to be question begging against the skeptic and so there's absolutely no reason to accept them and even if you do accept them as someone against the skeptic you cannot use them in an argument against the skeptic since they beg the question against the position this axiom is stronger than axiom 4 was but each of the next two axioms will be stronger than this but weaker than 5 so if you're convinced by these arguments that axiom 4.2 is too strong, there is no reason for you to accept any axiom that is stronger. So either 4.3 or 4.4, since 4.3 and 4.4 are going to imply all of these axioms that are weaker than they are. Up next, though, we are going to be looking at axiom 4.3 in doxastic and epistemic logic, Watch this video and more here at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.